Hi, this is independent health researcher Matt Stone from 180DegreeOfHealth.com and we're going to talk today about triglycerides. Now triglycerides, you hear a lot about triglycerides. We know that uh, you know doctors commonly give tests for your blood levels of triglycerides and that's significant and we know that a really high level of triglycerides definitely increases your risk for heart disease. In fact, if you're looking just at lab numbers, I still think from what I've seen, uh, the best indicator of your heart disease risk from looking at standard lab values is really looking at your triglyceride to HDL uh, cholesterol, HDL cholesterol levels. Um, you want those numbers to be as even as possible. You don't want to have triglycerides at 500 and HDL at 30. Uh, that's a huge ratio. Uh, you want it to be closer to 1 to 1, maybe having 65 on your triglyceride score and 65 on HDL or something like that. That would be more ideal. Very, very low risk of heart disease compared to a big disparity there. Um, so triglyceride synthesis in the liver, that's what we're going to talk specifically about today. Because you have fats in your diet, you consume fats, but I'm just talking about the type of triglyceride you synthesize in your liver. Now to figure out what kind of impact that has, the best thing to do is to look at a study in which uh, there's some little lab animals and they don't produce the enzyme that allows the triglycerides to be synthesized in the liver. There is such a study and that enzyme is called the acyl coenzyme A for DGAT1 and DGAT1 is the last step in mammalian triglyceride synthesis. So it's common to all mammals. There is a strain of rats that does not produce this uh, DGAT1 enzyme. So they do not produce triglycerides in their liver no matter what you feed them. Uh, the result compared to other little rats who uh, you know produce plenty of uh, of these uh, triglycerides, they uh, have greater insulin sensitivity, they have greater leptin sensitivity, and as should be expected with greater insulin and leptin sensitivity, they're more physically active, they have a higher metabolism, they don't have any weight problems, and so on. Um, people who have followed me for a long time, you guys all know I'm really, really clued into this insulin and leptin sensitivity because if you can find a nice systematic approach for reversing those problems, then you've essentially been able to prevent all different kinds of metabolic disease that stems from insulin resistance, such as type 2 diabetes, obesity, Alzheimer's, the list goes on and on. So, um, I guess from a practical standpoint, all that anybody wants to know is what can you do to reduce the production of triglycerides in your liver? Now, of course, these studies are all about, oh, you know, we got to create some drug now that inhibits DGAT1 activity to limit uh, triglyceride production so that we get all these positive benefits. Um, yeah, nonsense, because there's a lot of things that we can do right now to lower triglycerides and to stop this excessive synthesis of triglycerides in the liver and start to improve insulin and leptin sensitivity right away. So I'll get into five things and hopefully I won't forget one of the five things. I had to already re-record this video <laughs> because I did. <laughs> but the first one is uh, you want to have a high ratio of starch to simple sugar in your diet. Uh, fructose, uh, out of all the simple sugars, when it hits the liver it causes the most synthesis of triglyceride of any other type of sugar molecule. Uh, other simple sugars will do that as well, but to a much lesser extent. And starch doesn't seem to increase triglyceride production at all. Um, so really having a high starch to simple sugar ratio in your diet will really help, especially if you already have high triglycerides and you have metabolic syndrome and you have um, abdominal obesity and you have rising blood sugars and high insulin levels and all those things. Um, you know, maybe a normal person, healthy person, young person, maybe they don't need to do this, but the odds are if you, if you have developed a health problem, that's, that's the first step. High ratio of starch to simple sugars. Um, in fact, I would keep the simple sugar as low as possible. Uh, the second, no alcohol. Alcohol, when it hits the liver, I know this is bad, this is all bad news. <laughs> I know when alcohol hits the liver, it produces a lot of these triglycerides as well. It's handled in the same way as fructose. So no alcohol. 
Um, and like I said, low simple sugars maximizing the starch. So beans, corn, whole grains, potatoes, yams, lots of those, very little of the simple sugars, including potentially fruit, but that brings up the third uh, thing to do, which is to eat a high fiber diet. We know that a high fiber intake, for some miraculous reason, inhibits triglyceride production. I don't know if it's because of slower absorption. I don't know if it's because of the metabolic effects that take place in the digestive tract when you have all this fiber fermenting in the gut. I don't know exactly what it is. It doesn't really matter. The bottom line is that a high carbohydrate diet will lower your triglyceride production in your liver. So you want to eat whole carbohydrates. You don't want to be eating lots of white flour. You don't want to white, eat white sugar. Uh, you know, you're looking at things that are wholesome, whole grains, uh, that are totally intact. I'm talking brown rice instead of white rice. I'm talking about, um, you know, eating whole potatoes and just sticking away, you know, getting away from the white breads and, uh, of course, the simple sugars, which we've already mentioned. So that's, that's the third one. The fourth, um, here I go, I get, I get lost when I get to the last two. Now, the fourth is uh, your fatty acid intake. Um, I just came across another study today, it was very interesting, and they induced you know, high triglycerides and leptin resistance and insulin resistance by feeding a lot of sucrose to these rats, which is common and that's what happens when you feed rats a lot of sucrose. But the interesting thing was is that they were able to reverse that without removing the sucrose. Um, it wasn't a complete reversal, but they certainly had some major improvements and they did that by taking the corn oil out and substituting with fish oil instead. So they're doing omega-3 instead of omega-6. Now if you follow me for a long time you know that uh, you know I'm not a big you know take 10 grams of fish oil every day kind of guy. I'm more about reducing the omega-6 that caused the problem in the first place and the imbalance in the first place. So you can supplement with a little omega-3 if you want but the main thing is that you bring the omega-6 down to a normal healthy level. That means getting out the corn oil and the canola oil and the cottonseed oil and the, all the different vegetable oils that are in the modern diets. So that means avoiding salad dressings and fried food and all that stuff at restaurants and really trying to minimize that omega-6. Um, the last one, uh, the last major one is, is just eating solid foods. If you eat solid foods versus liquid foods, automatically you're going to reduce your alcohol intake and your sugar intake, which is probably the main reason for favoring solid foods over liquid foods, but you do get slower absorption and you are more likely to eat something like a whole fruit uh, which contains all of its fiber versus consuming something that is low in fiber. So anyways, those are my five tips for lowering your triglycerides. Almost completely 100% foolproof. You don't have to really eat a lot of starch. You don't really have to eat a lot of fiber. Um, but if you're going to eat a high carbohydrate diet, um, you definitely want to do that. And I do think there's actually some advantages to a high carbohydrate diet in terms of improving insulin and leptin sensitivity. So yeah, you can eat fat. No need to restrict, to restrict fat and be obsessive about it, but you don't want it to be a super, super high fat diet or a low, low carb, high fat diet. Um, yes, that will reduce your triglycerides, but it's not going to help you improve your insulin leptin sensitivity to the same degree. So anyways, that's it for me today on triglycerides, and uh, yeah, talk to you guys again soon. Thanks again. This is Matt Stone of 180 Degree Health.